Hello, hello. Welcome to another um, segment from the GSMC Wrestling Podcast presented by um, GMC, GS, ah, oh God, GSMC, sorry guys, GSMC Podcast Network. Um, we recently spoke about um, kind of NXT review, kind of a little bit about the AEW preview. And um, next, we're going to talk about Mercedes Monet. Mercedes Monet's uh, Monet. Monet. Um, which, you know, we all kind of want to talk to, you know, exactly the reason why, um, she is pronounced because it says Monet talks kind of like money talks. Um, so Monet told variety that she still haven't kind of taken everything in yet. Um, that she kind of felt like Stone Cold Steve Austin in her return, which is kind of cool. It kind of like reflects on her knowledge of the wrestling industry, because I know one of her main influences was, uh, uh, Eddie Guerrero. The uh, Gory Guerrero, kind of like the Guerrero family, um, but uh, and I think still to this day she goes up to the top room. She does the frog splash, and uh, I think every single time she uh, has like a like a finisher, she kind of like puts them on her back, kind of like the Gory Bomb that uh, Gory Guerrero used to use to defeat his opponents. Um, but now she kind of like flips it around, and it's uh, you know all in all looks you know pretty cool. Um, you know, it's always good to be innovative, especially when it comes to wrestling moves. You don't want to see things kind of go out of style, kind of like Shawn Michaels is a super kick. Now you kind of see people super kicking people and it doesn't really mean anything. But back in my day, when I saw someone do the super kick, you're like, oh my God, it's over. How is he going to get up from that? But nowadays, or like back, back in the eighties where Hulkamania would just, you know, do the leg drop and everyone was like, oh my God, it's a leg drop. No one can kick out of that. But nowadays it's kind of just like a standard wrestling movie. You don't make too much of a big deal out of it. But um, you know, uh, moving on. Um, so the best thing about um, um, Mercedes Monet is that she was able to uh, make her AEW debut at her hometown in Boston, which I kind of hinted at before. Like there, it was called Big Business. You had the boss, the CEO coming in, and it's you know the boss business work. You know, kind of white collar, you know, kind of thing, kind of playing into it. So I think the, um, that's the reason why they named it that um, that special event that was going on. But she debuted in her hometown of Boston, which is pretty cool. That's kind of like a dream for anybody, you know, joining the wrestling circuit. Or basically, uh, what about like, well, I don't know if it really pertains to like sports like NBA, baseball, hockey, football, because like you're constantly traveling, you're constantly coming back. Um, it's kind of, I guess you can kind of compare it to if you're an NBA player and you're, it's your birthday and you score shit, like a, a bunch of points and like, it was like, Oh, on his birthday, like he scores like 67 points or something like that. Honestly, I think that would be kind of be the, the best I can do to kind of equivocate, you know, what I'm kind of talking about here. But, um, so, uh, Eric Bischoff former general manager of uh, Monday Night Raw and one of the heads for WCW said in a podcast that um, basically that the AEW, they gained a million viewers for one segment, for one segment, for basically Sasha Banks. Um, And Mercedes Monet is constantly revolutionizing the woman wrestling business. Either if it's in the ring or off the ring, you got to like... It's crazy because if someone's going to draw a million viewers, honestly, she should be the main event. She's like the Roman Reigns of AEW right now. Like, because last time I checked, um, and uh, according to Forbes uh, magazine a couple years ago, that Roman topped out around $5 million per year. Kind of like what Sasha Banks is getting paid right now. Or Mercedes Monet. Sorry. Dang it. Um She's main event caliber. She's also had signed a huge contract. And um, and the fact that she's back on cable television, that's actually a very, very, very big deal that she's back on cable television. Because, of course, you had her on uh, New Japan Wrestling. She did a little bit of the independent circuit as soon as she left the WWE in 2022 in May. Um, but, um, those kind of things you have to pay for like an external kind of thing, kind of like a peacock, but obviously you have uh WWE SmackDown on Fox and you have the WWE raw on, um, 
on the USA Network. But um, honestly, this is pretty huge. This is something that if you're in uh, AEW creative or storylines or just like the script supervisor or the showrunner, the director, um, you're going to want to show kind of like the best you have last kind of like you know you kind of build it all up build it all up kind of tease the segment a little bit and then you kind of have the main event like right there the question for AEW is trying to find a woman that can hang with like the mercedes monet kind of popularity there like i like willing willow of a uh, nightingale but i don't know like they're kind of leading up to like a, a tony storm versus a. Uh, Mercedes money, which would be pretty badass. I would love to see that. Um, but uh, obviously, I think it's going to take time. I think if they give her a title opportunity right off the bat, fans are going to be kind of kind of be like, oh, okay, she comes back from WWE, and uh, all of a sudden, she's the best, and uh, I don't like that. And, uh, you know, it's just for ratings. Guys, come on. It's just for ratings. When it comes to wrestling shows, guess what? If the ratings aren't there, if the butts aren't in the seats, you're not selling merchandise, you're not selling tickets, Guess what? You're going to become something just like, and I'm not trying to put down these wrestling entities. Like you're going to become like a TNA. You watch TNA. You watch the NWA. You watch Ring of Honor. You watch New Japan Wrestling. And you see probably like a crowd of like 1,000, 2,000 tops. But uh, if you're like in AEW, which their you know their main thing is they're going to fight at Wembley Stadium, and that's absolutely huge because that's like a huge sports complex that's kind of like fighting at the madison square garden equivalent to like european wrestling so i don't know um for aw i think um the the acquisition of mercedes monet is going to be pretty big um in that um so like i said she's only 32 years old so she's kind of you know she's still in the prime and uh, she shared why she chose AEW. And I quote, um, she said, you can do so much more in AEW. You can do everything. So this is the place for me to be. Kind of showing why, I don't know, kind of showing how AEW is uh, a lot more different than WWE because uh, WWE kind of has their own agenda. And they kind of like, it's like one of those things where Kind of, oh man, I don't want to like, you know, misspeak or I don't want to seem like belligerent or ignorant or anything like that. But the executives from WWE kind of tell you who you are and what you want to be. Um, because I think, oh man, I think I actually read this lately in like an article with Nick Nemeth, uh, aka Dolph Ziggler, that WWE doesn't like to use people's real names. And you wonder why is that? Uh, because they want to ensure that they have your character. And if you decide to leave WWE, guess what? You're going to have to start fresh. Like, for example, Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks is, was such a household name, especially in the wrestling industry, that was consumed with WWE, NXT, Raw, SmackDown, pay-per-views, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but the moment, the moment she left, she had to switch her name to Mercedes Monet. And I got to be honest, I, I kind of over... I kind of, you know, overread some uh, some articles and I kind of looked over it, overlooked, sorry, that was more of a better term. Um, and um, it was like Mercedes Monet. And I was like, who the heck is Mercedes Monet and why should I care? Um, the moment I found out it was Sasha Banks, I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. Like, it's crazy how somebody could be successful out of the WWE. And I'm not saying how, you know, I'm not saying that that's true, but I'm just saying as a, uh, I was brought up a WWF fan, WWE fan, everybody else, you know, WCW, everything else was kind of like a side chick, you know what I mean? And like, if it's not WWE, you kind of, as a wrestling fan, kind of overlook it and you kind of like, you know, like, ah, I'm not really going to pay attention to that. I think that's the reason why WWE, you know, they control your name, they control your identity and they kind of want, you know, which is, you know, and I'm not trying to speak bad upon the WWE. That's smart. That's smart. That's smart business ethics wise. That's like letting go of like one of your better employees that you couldn't afford and like erasing their work ethic on like a resume or something like that. But, you know, anyways, moving on. Um, so uh, she spoke to ESPN and stated that she is fully recovered from her broken foot, which is good. Um, she's set to make five million dollars per year, guys. That's huge. Um, and what I kind of want to touch on real quick is that Becky Lynch is soon to be a free agent. 
So she can kind of use Monet. This is why I say Monet's contract signing is pretty like, you know, blockbuster, kind of groundbreaking, is that a lot of the superstars from AEW, NXT, WWE, from the women's side, are going to kind of use Monet's, um, you know, kind of use her, like, her contract. It's kind of like the stepping stone. Like, to be like, well, you know, especially with Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch is, like, so recognized in the wrestling industry right now. WWE would absolutely have n no choice but to sign her. And if they don't sign her, that would be extremely stupid. We would lose her, lose viewers, and then, like, oh, that would be absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. But, um, I don't know. Um, so, but some of the, uh, you know, kind of, you know, before we uh, end the segment, uh, some of the top paid WWE superstars, according to Forbes, was Brock Lesnar at $10 million. Um, Roman Reigns at $5 million. Randy Orton at four point one. million. Becky Lynch's last contract was good for uh, $3.10 million. So, obviously, from Becky to uh, Mercedes Monet is a, you know, huge discrepancy. So... All right, that was my Mercedes Monet take. Um, don't go anywhere. We're um, kind of limited on a little bit of chime here, but just remember that we have um, a little bit of Bray Wyatt talk. Becoming immortal. Um, a uh, Peacock extravaganza documentary coming out about um, you know Bray Wyatt. So it's going to be pretty cool. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 